a couple of minor news and notes just uh, to take care of business here. OU has added an offensive line commit. Drew Bat, 6'8", 250, played eight-man football, not listed in 247 in regards to a, a ranking there, uh, but more of the preferred walk-on route for Drew Bat is an offensive lineman committing here in the last couple of days, and then also defensive lineman Reed Lindsey, who was on campus and with the football program and with the team for four years but recorded no statistics uh, basically didn't get on the field for the past four years. Reed Lindsay has entered the transfer portal just to get those news items out of the way. But uh, what is being discussed, it seems, first and foremost, is with Alabama losing its offensive coordinator, Bill O'Brien, that um, there is an opening there, that Jeff Levy has obviously done a fine job both in the SEC and with Oklahoma and would be a prime candidate for that job. And uh, that has been swirling out there among the rumor mill recently, Jason. Yeah, Mark, I think it's interesting. Uh, to your point, a guy like Jeff Levy that's had success in the SEC has had success in the Big 12, obviously with Baylor and then, you know, all – all accounts, particularly from a run game perspective, has had a lot of success even last and even this year with, with Oklahoma. And I think, you know, in, in some of the things that Saban has said in terms of what he's looking for from an offensive coordinator, I think he's looking for a guy that's going to, you know, get Alabama back to their roots, so to speak, a little bit, just in terms of ha having a, a, a more powerful and better running game. So I think kind of depending on who you talk to, mark and kind of what you hear levy's either you know his number one choice or, or certainly somewhere within the top three uh, of, of of his choices right now uh, as an offensive coordinator so it's it's one of those things that you know i think levy has been very tight-lipped just in terms of as you would expect for a large degree but he's been fairly tight-lipped just in terms of and, and people around him or, or whether there would be any mutual interest. I mean, I think it would be, I think it would be difficult for him to, to leave Oklahoma as, you know, with his as being his alma mater um, outside of a head coaching job. Now I say that with the fact that when, when Saban comes calling, you, you have to at least listen, right? I mean, you have to, you have to listen to the conversation. And, and so it, it's one of those things that I would say personally, just from just from what I've what I'm hearing, there's a chance that if he was offered the job, he would take it. But I don't I don't think it's a slam dunk, or I think there's a, a much bigger chance that he would stay um, in Norman with Oklahoma as opposed to uh, moving on with with Alabama and Saban. Because you know you you look at one side, there's still a lot of there's a lot of pressure at both schools, right? Obviously. But I think there's enormous, even maybe even a little bit more pressure at a place like Alabama. Um, not only you know working for a guy like Saban, who is very much a perfectionist in, in every you know every stretch of the imagination, but I think also um, you know there's a lot more eyeballs and expectations for for Alabama's offense, and you know specifically how they ended this season, not even making the playoffs, and and so obviously Oklahoma's kind of still building, um, and he's got a little bit of a I don't know if leeway is the right word to use, but he's but there's a little bit more patience I think at at, at Oklahoma. So um, it'll be interesting to see how this unfolds. I wouldn't be surprised to see something happened pretty soon. Um, obviously he's Saban has both an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator to, um, to replace. Although I've heard some, I've, I've heard some rumors that Jeremy Pruitt could end up being the guy on the defensive side um, of the ball for, for, for that, but something to something to continue to look at um, as Oklahoma kind of progresses through this early spring and you know getting into spring ball and things like that if that continues to be something that is you know an option for for levy and and how that obviously ends up impacting oklahoma one way or the other yeah jeremy pruitt um certainly considered arguably uh, the best defensive coordinator 
in the country. That's how he made his way up through the ranks and certainly put himself in a position to get a head coaching job in the SEC. Uh, issues aside, just in terms of managing a defense, coordinating a defense, and of course, uh, those issues that that he created, let's say, uh, would not be a factor uh, as he would not be running the football program. So he's highly coveted uh, in that position and uh, certainly available because of uh, his misdeeds. So he is out there, and uh, that seems to be an obvious connection. He's, again, considered one of the best, and Alabama's looking for the best in those coordinator positions. So, uh, yeah, we will continue to track that and discuss that and uh, see how things play out and if there are any moves. And, and another factor in this, and I don't know what the numbers are, but the reputation for the top SEC schools is that they pay assistants and coordinators in particular more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And what, how that would play out and what those numbers would be between Alabama and Oklahoma, uh, I don't know. But of course, again, those top SEC schools have the reputation of breaking the bank for uh, top coordinators and do pay at the highest level. Uh, I think some of the other conferences and the major powers in those conferences are, are catching up and have stepped it up in recent years. But uh, of course, Oklahoma is coming to the sec. So they're going to be playing in yeah. that uh, sandbox with everybody else and, and having to dish out those kind of numbers. Yeah. And I think the other thing that's important to consider here for um, and, and, you know, obviously I'm not necessarily advocating for one way or the other. I think he's done it. He did a great job this year, uh, particularly within the run game for, for Oklahoma, you know, in, a, in his first year. But the the track record of coordinators at Alabama that have went on, whether it's, you know, head coaches or whether it's, you know, different, different programs and being very, very successful – um, you know, I think that's probably got a weigh on his mind, understanding that probably he feels like I would assume at this point, right? He feels like his next logical step is to be a head coach somewhere, um, you know, at the obviously at the FBS level, whether it's power five or, or whatever it is, I think, you know, inside his camp, like that's where he wants to be in his next in his next step. So does a place like Alabama, does he feel like that affords him? a better opportunity to get to, to go to that next step. Now, I, I don't know, you know, it's kind of rhetorical in nature, but uh, I, I think, you know, both, both places have, have, have been, have provided successful, you know, career paths. I know people don't like, you know, the, we don't really like talking about Lincoln Riley on here, but, you know, Lincoln Riley went from obviously Oklahoma's offensive coordinator, head coach. And now, um, so, that progression has been has been successful on on other arenas like Josh Heupel's another one that um, you know interestingly enough he was fired as the Oklahoma offensive coordinator and now he's um, you know he's done just a fantastic job at Tennessee over the last couple of years surpassed my even you know my expectations of what he would be able to do so you know I think it's it's almost six in one hand half a dozen in the other in terms of what that looks like. So I think, you know, ultimately he'll, the money, um, you know, I think he's one of the highest paid offensive coordinators at Oklahoma, but you're, you're right, Mark. I mean, I think that the, the ability for Alabama to, um, to pay their coordinators um, a lot, a lot of money is something that I don't know if that's enticing to him or not, but I, I think it'll be something that I think at the end of the day, if they have a conversation or they talk to him, I think, it's something that he'll certainly consider now how serious is that consideration will be, will be interesting to follow.